Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. We will now solve problems on reinforced concrete design, particularly on flexural strength. So let us start. A reinforced concrete rectangular beam having an overall dimension of 300 by 500 has tension reinforcements of 320 millimeter bars. So let us draw the even beam. So its dimension is its width is 300 and its overall depth is 500. It has three 20 mm tension bars. So let's say the tension site is at the bottom of the beam. Which of the following most nearly gives the nominal strength of the beam? Let us compute for the effective depth. So when we say effective depth, that is the distance from the centroid of the of the steel reinforcements up to the extreme fiber in compression so our symbol for effective depth is d so let us solve the effective depth so based on the figure to get the effective depth that is the overall depth h minus the concrete cover minus the diameter of the stirrups use and then we subtract half of the diameter of the bar d sub b over 2 so let us solve that is 500 minus the concrete cover 40 so if if the concrete cover is not given so our default value for beams is 40 millimeter. And then based on the problem, the diameter of the stirrups is 10 mm. And then the diameter of the bars for flexural capacity is 20. So minus 20 over 2. We can now solve D. So that is 500 minus 40 minus 10 minus 20 over 2 so the effective depth is 440 millimeter okay so in determining the the nominal moment strength take note that the nominal moment strength of a of a reinforced concrete beam comes from the tension compression couple made by the concrete and steel so let's say this is the compression block of the beam and then this is the steel reinforcement so let's say this is the compressive force developed on the compression side and then this is the tensile force developed on the steel reinforcement so let's say the total compressive force is C and then the total tensile force is T. So to satisfy the equilibrium, the compressive force should be equal to the tensile force. So we have C equals T. In getting the compressive force from the concrete, that is 0.85 Fc prime times the width of the beam and then times the depth of compression block. So, our symbol for the depth of compression block is A. And then we equate this to the number of tensile reinforcements. So, that is AS times FY. Okay, so we substitute 0 0.85 FC prime A times B equals 3 pi over 4. 22 squared, uh, sorry, 20 squared, times Fy, which is 400. Okay, so based from the equilibrium of the compression and tensile force, we can now solve for the depth of compression block. A is 59.1358.6171 millimeters. Okay. So in the equation that we have written, 
As you can see, we have used the value of the yield strike of the steel. Therefore, we have assumed that the value of the steel, or sorry, we have assumed that the tensile reinforcement yields. So we have to check on that, or we have to confirm that the steel yields. So we will now check the, the corresponding stress on the tensile re reinforcement. So first, we compute for the tensile strain epsilon sub t, and that is 0 0.003 times d minus c over c. Okay? So by the way, we have another variable here, which is c. c is what we call the step of the neutral axis. This is the value of c. How do we relate the value of a and c? So they are related through the factor beta times c. Okay, so how do we compute for beta? Based on the code, beta is 0.85 if the given fc prime is less than 28 megapascal. And then it varies, this beta factor varies if the fc prime is in between 28 and 35 megapascal. And then it has again a constant value of 0.65 for Fc prime greater than 35 megapascals. Okay, so in our problem, the given Fc prime is 25 megapascal, so therefore our beta is 0 0.85. So we will use this to get the value of C. This is A. And then we equate that to 0.85 of C. So we can now solve for the value of C. And that is 69.571602 millimeters. Okay, so we can now compute the net tensile strain. That is 0 0.003 times the depth, which is 440. 440 minus C. So the net tensile strain is 0 0.0159 Okay? So from this, we can now compute the corresponding stress in the steel, and that is the strain times the modulus of elasticity. So we just have to multiply this by the modulus of elasticity. So now Fs equals 3,194 megapascals. Okay, that is way beyond the yield strength of 400 megapascal. Therefore, we confirm that the steel reinforcement yields.